This is the song of the periodical cicada, commonly called the centine-year locust. It has been heard re-echoing from the walls of this stately Maryland mansion at regular 17-year intervals since 1768. This region is the home of one of the 14 broods. Brood 10 appeared last in 1936 for a few weeks in June and July. Millions of these harmless insects fill the air with their song. The shrubs and trees were covered with them, crawling, flying, and singing. By mid-July, they had disappeared. The life history of this insect affords a good study of a type of the great order of Hemeptera, or true bugs. The sound comes from the little drum-like membrane under the wing. Look inside and see the large muscles that cause this membrane to vibrate like the stretched cone of a loudspeaker. The so-called pharaoh note lasting about five seconds is made when the cicada raises his abdomen to a horizontal position. It ceases abruptly when the abdomen drops. Only the male can sing. The female lays the eggs which hatch the little grubs to become the next generation. The eggs are laid through a long tube enclosed in a protecting sheath, the ovipositor. The eggs are inserted deeply under the bark of twigs through the sheath, a chisel-like tool which rips the bark and makes a cavity for eggs. Notice the pump-like motion with which the eggs are laid. From 20 to 40 eggs are neatly placed in a double row and she moves ahead to begin another. Let us cut away the bark that we may better see the eggs. Millions of these egg packets rest quietly a few weeks with no apparent change. However, within the eggs, the life processes are going on and a microscopic cell is becoming a living grub. In about six weeks, the covering is broken and a living thing crawls out to air and sunshine, soon freeing himself from the transparent membrane which lines the egg. Now, another is crawling out. and still another, and soon all will be free. What becomes of this seemingly helpless creature after he falls to the ground? He burrows down several feet beneath the surface of the earth, where he lives by sucking juices from the roots of various plants. So for 17 years he feeds and grows without injuring the vegetation on which he lives. When fully grown, he comes up near the surface. He then hollows out a temporary cell and undergoes changes in preparation for life above ground. Should the small boy who saw the helpless grubs fall to the forest floor return as a full-grown man 17 years later, he might find many holes in the ground through which the grubs had escaped. These strange creatures emerge only at night. If the soil is moist, they build chimneys of mud around the exit. Now you see little resemblance to either the adult or the grub as hatched from the egg. Now 
Note the strong forelegs. With these he digs the tunnels in which he lives for many years. Many thousands of them are moving over the ground. They find a post or a tree with rough bark, crawl up until an anchorage for the sharp claws is found, and attach themselves securely. This one is all set. And if you will observe the white line on his back, you will see the outer covering begin to split. A new covering has grown beneath the old one. At first it is very soft and pliable. The cicada comes out of his old covering in the night or early morning. He seems to have the most difficulty in freeing himself from the lining of his air breathing tubes which are shed with the old skin. His legs are pulled free but his new claws are of little use until they harden. Notice his stubby wings. Had we the patience to watch a few hours, we would see them expand, not by true growth, but in reality they are blown up like toy balloons. Notice also the gradual appearance of the adult markings. Now, millions of cicadas are in the air. For about three weeks, they will live as winged insects above the earth. In the brief span of their adult life, they will mate and lay the eggs of a new generation which will come to maturity 17 years hence.